Hi, welcome to Steen's lab. This video is just a short presentation of who am I and uh, what can you expect to, uh, to, to find of content uh, on, on my channel. I'm an engineer, uh, electronics, uh, and uh, I am uh, the head of uh, network research and development at a Danish internet service provider. I've been doing YouTube for a couple of years, uh, but I've been doing YouTube only in Danish. Uh, so uh, now's the time to start spreading out <laughs> and trying to do this uh, in English. Uh, and I do apologize for my uh, rusty English. Uh, I hope you still understand <laughs> what I'm saying, but uh, uh, I have not been uh, speaking English uh, on a daily basis for uh, some time. Uh, so, so uh, yeah, <laughs> I have to get back into the habit. Um, so uh, feel free to, to have a laugh at my expense. Uh, and uh, hopefully if uh, there's anything that uh, you don't understand that I'm saying, then please do let me know in uh, the comments below. So what kind of content do I produce? Well, I'm a nerd. I have to admit, I'm a nerd. I love tinkling with stuff. Tinkering, not tinkling. Yeah, well, that was the part about the language. <laughs> um, I love tinkering. Uh, so I do a number of different projects, uh, DIY robots and stuff like that. Uh, but um, the primary thing that I actually started doing when I started my channel is doing tests of Wi-Fi routers, various um, Wi-Fi routers. And uh, I do this because, well, I work professionally with these kind of devices. I'm responsible for the end user equipment um, at uh, the Danish uh, internet service provider. So I do this every day already, so might as well do it in my spare time as well. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to uh, educate people on uh, what the technology is actually capable of doing and what kind of performance to expect when uh, introducing a new Wi-Fi router in your home. So uh, I think the best way of uh, showing you what kind of content I provide is actually to show you some stuff from my Danish channel. And if we have a look here, this is my Danish channel, Nerd Oteget. Nerd is the Danish word for nerd. Almost sounds the same, but spelled a bit differently. Uh, the Danish language uh, have some weird characters for you uh, English folks. Um, and this is just a, a yeah, a uh, number of different videos. If we have a look here at this, uh, this example, this is an example. Uh, XDSL link errors, how to find the root cause is the headline of, of uh, this. This is actually a almost one hour long video. I tend to do quite long videos because I do go into a very great level of detail. And uh, this is on purpose. Uh, well, partly on purpose. I'm not very good at... Uh, doing stuff in short uh, because I think that uh, a lot of times when I watch a video on YouTube I, I, I feel um, that I do not get um, all the details and that's actually what I'm interested in I'm a nerd I need the details I want the details so I t tend to go into very deep detail when I try to explain stuff and this so this is a video where I uh, actually try to explain how an ISP can diagnose a faulty DSL line using already collected telemetry data. Uh, very interesting. I might do it if you uh, ask me to. I might do uh, some similar stuff in, uh, in English, uh, but um, this is not uh, the plan right now, at least. So, so I do a lot of uh, technical deep dives. Uh, I've done a lot of videos doing deep dives on various uh, topics on uh, Wi-Fi, power line communication, stuff like that. How does that actually work? What is the limitations? What are, what are the consequences of using the technology? And uh, what kind of performance should you expect in real life? I fly uh, FPV freestyle. So I fly quads, and uh, from time to time I do a video uh, about uh, quad flying. So like I said, I do Wi-Fi tests. And this is an example of a product that I've been uh, testing, uh, Ubiquiti Amplify HD, which is a sort of a Wi-Fi extender, but it's a, a, a quite a high-end uh, Wi-Fi extender, actually a very nice product. 
So this is an example of a video. It's uh, almost 40 minutes, um, 40 minutes, and I try to 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 add a sort of a, a table of contents or whatever. So so you have an, a a chance of jumping uh, to the part of the video that uh, interests uh, you the most. You might not want to watch an entire 40 minute uh, video. So. Um, I should have, yeah, no, no audio, yeah, because, well, I'm speaking, if you want to hear that, uh, how yeah. that sounds, this Og, is uh, jeg vil, Danish. Uh, starte ud med et produkt. Yeah, so uh, let's uh, let's do it like this. So so I do an unboxing, well, everybody does an unboxing. I do an installation. Um, and when I do installation, uh, I, I'm, um, I'm not rehearsing my videos up front. Actually, uh, I, I sh perhaps I should add that. Uh, when I do a video, I have no script, I have no plans. Basically, I, I grab a product and I turn on the camera and then see what happens. So so I'm as surprised as you are. <laughs> um, and when I do the installation of the device, I think it's very important, actually, that I, I, do, I do not do any kind of uh, previous um, planning or, or rehearsing or anything because I want to convey uh, as accurate as possible uh, a, 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 an image on, on what it is like to install a, a given product. And from time to time, I uh, test products that have uh, inconsistencies in, in the 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 user interface or the manual or whatever and it, it becomes a very frustrating experience for me to 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 install it and you'll see that in the video you'll see my confusion uh, in the video and but, but because i think that's that's uh, actually important i think it's important uh, and and um, also i i, I want to push the vendors to to uh, put more effort into designing proper user interfaces because it is possible to design a user interface that is actually intuitive and easy to use uh, but a lot of vendors are not really doing a good enough job in that department and that makes for a, a suboptimal installation perhaps that actually means that a customer that is getting a product and installs it might not get as good uh, uh, an experience as uh, he or she could could have had if the product had been more intuitive to use. So that's why. Uh, so so I do uh, this installation, and once I've installed the device, I do a Wi-Fi performance test. This is actually a small uh, tool that I've uh, written uh, myself. I can show it here. Perhaps uh, is perhaps better. Um, when I do these tests, and this this is a uh, yeah, I'll probably talk more about that uh, in a, in a future video when I do a, an English uh, video on a specific Wi-Fi product uh, that I test. Then then I'll explain more into details. But basically, I have excuse me. Uh, basically, I have a very structured approach to doing these uh, tests. Some people argue that when you do this uh, Wi-Fi performance test, you should do the Wi-Fi performance test in an anechoic chamber which is a, a, a chamber that is totally uh, void of any kind of RFI, radio interference um, uh, noise and stuff like that. And uh, typically the walls in the room is uh, actually, um, uh, they, they have uh, some special uh, radio wave absorbing material. They are typically like these cones you can see on walls, um, which it makes a, a, an optimal uh, an optimal. Uh, environment to to get the maximum performance um, I do not do that firstly because well I don't have an anechoic chamber but secondly I don't live in an an anechoic chamber and no n nobody does people live in houses and they live in apartments there are, is noise present in a normal environment reflections multipath propagation all those kind of phenomena that is actually affecting the performance and stability of a Wi-Fi link. So I think it's important to test in a realistic scenario, and I'm choosing to use my own house as a realistic test scenario. Of course, that means that when I get a result of 100 megabits per second or whatever, you cannot expect to get 100 megabits per second using the same device in your home because your home is not my home and there are differences. But what I can 
uh, say about those data is that they are representative. So if I get a high performance comparatively in my home, you can expect similarly to get a high performance in your home. And because I test very structured and this in, this, in the same exact way each time, I can compare products to another, to one another. So, so if I have a device, now I have tested, I don't know, 20 different Wi-Fi routers or something like that. If I, the device that performs the best in my tests, I can almost guarantee that you will get reasonable performance or high performance using this device in your t uh, setup as well. So that's, that's uh, the reason behind this. When we are talking Wi-Fi performance, Basically, any kind of Wi-Fi performance issue or stability issue, there are three parts of a problem. You have the Wi-Fi router, you have the environment, meaning attenuation and noise, and then you have the client. And people tend to focus only on the Wi-Fi router. If they have a poor Wi-Fi experience, it must be the router. That's not necessarily the case, and this is some of the stuff that I'm demonstrating using these data. So, so um, when I do my tests, I can pick a, 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 some device, maybe a device that is probably more known uh, in your part of the world, Google Unhub, uh, could, it could be, or it could be Netgear's X10, which is a very nice uh, Wi-Fi router as well. Then, then I, I choose this, um, the, the, the router out here. These tests are done uh, automatically, well, semi-automatically. I have to move the devices myself, but the test itself is actually run under software control. I've written a small um, a software platform to, to, to do these tests. I store them in a database, and then I can use this uh, tool to, to present them easily. So I have my uh, device I'm testing. Then I have five different clients I'm testing, an iPhone, an Android phone, an old laptop using Windows, an iPad, and a MacBook Pro, just to have some, some different devices with different and number of antennas and different quality of antennas to, to kind of get a, a, a reasonable spread and also a reasonably uh, res representative uh, number of devices uh, that, that uh, typically people could have in their home. For each of these devices, I test on six different locations in my house. Some of the locations are very easy, on the Wi-Fi link, uh, the most easy one is actually just one and a half meters from the uh, location of the Wi-Fi router uh, uh, with no, um, no uh, interruptions in between. And some of the test cases are very, very difficult for the Wi-Fi link. Uh, typically, when I go from one floor to another floor in the house, it's really difficult for a Wi-Fi uh, product, both, both because they are actually uh, there's a difference in... Um, how um, well the uh, sensitivity of the antennas are on the Z plane compared to how it is on the X, Y plane. But also because uh, the, the floor between two floors, or how do you say that? The thing that you walk upon <laughs> between two floors is uh, it, it can be really difficult to penetrate for a Wi-Fi signal. In my case, for example, I have between my living floor and my basement, I have floor heating, water-based floor heating uh, in my living floor. Uh, and uh, there are some uh, aluminum water or heat distribution plates for, for the, the, the hoses carrying the, the hot water in the floor. And aluminum is a really good shield uh, for, for, for RF. So basically, I have a, 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 an RF shield between my, my uh, um, ground floor and my basement. And this means that actually that even if the distance is only a few meters or perhaps five or ten meters, uh, the signal have a very hard time uh, penetrating. So, so I get uh, this provides a really good um, overview of how is the device performing under different uh, circumstances. And I can compare. So, so I can take this Netgear. Let's compare that to... Um, the TP link, and let's use uh, whatever an iPad, and then use uh, my basement as a difficult test case, and then I can plot. Oh, sorry, just typically. Hey, sorry about that. Netgear and uh, TP link and an iPad and a basement and plot. Boom, and then you can see in this case. 
actually both the Netgear and the TP-Link are fairly high performing devices so so I get reasonable maybe I should choose uh, a device with a uh, not as good antenna yeah that's better there you really see a difference between two products so the blue one is the net uh, the Netgear and the yellow one is the TP-Link so in this case you can actually have a device with 20 megabits per second or 100 megabits per second it's a factor of five between those two um, so this this is a uh, stuff that I'm talking about when I do these uh, Wi-Fi tests but that's not all I'm very focused on power consumption both because well as an engineer, I've actually uh, been taught to, to design, uh, actually by birth, I'm a hardware design engineer. Um, and I've been taught to focus on environmentally uh, sound design. Or I'm not sure how you say that in English, but whatever. I'm told to, be, uh, to, to, to design a product to be as efficient as possible. That makes basically makes sense, not, not only for the environment, but uh, also for the the money <laughs> uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, expensive to to uh, to uh, spend a lot of power on nothing except heat so so um, i'm focused on that and as an isp we are actually uh, there are requirements on an isp um, by the authorities we are not allowed to deploy a device unless it uh, adheres to uh, certain standards uh, regarding power consumption uh, in the eu there's a code of conduct on power efficiency energy efficiency uh, and and we have to comply but if you buy a wi-fi router in retail they do not have to comply uh, to the same rules as an isp necessarily and from experience from all these tests i've noticed a very very significant difference in products some products are five times more efficient than other products and that makes a big difference of course it's uh for, from an environmental point of view or a climate point of view it's ridiculous to waste power but but also from from a, a, a cost of ownership point of view if if there's a in some cases it, it can it can add up to perhaps 50 dollars per, per per year in difference depending of course on, on uh, the cost of uh, electricity in your area but uh, $50 is $50 uh, I would prefer not to uh, spend it uh, on, on nothing I, I, you, you can buy a, a very nice uh, slice of pizza for, for $50 <laughs> um, so I do uh, power consumption I do uh, I measured uh, actually very accurately using a, a power analyzer you'll see that set up when I, when I get to one of those videos then uh, I measure, I think I did not click correctly. Yeah, yeah. Then I measure uh, the antenna characteristics of the devices. I've built, um, oh, maybe, uh, yeah, there you go. As you can see here, I, I, I do these kind of polar plots uh, showing the, the, um, the antenna characteristics, uh, uh, meaning how omnidirectional uh, is the antenna characteristic of the Wi-Fi router are there differences between uh, the coverage to the left and to the right or um, stuff like that I've uh, designed my own turntable um, and a, a small again small software platform that, uh, that con controls a spectrum analyzer and I can do these kind of measurements on both 2.4 uh, gigahertz and 5 gigahertz spans so th that's a typical uh, Wi-Fi test from uh, Stain's lab that uh, hopefully you will see in the future I do various robotics or nerd stuff electronics and stuff like that um, I do uh, uh, quite a lot of 3d printing um, I have made this is a, a, a robot it's a, actually a, a well it's a an ongoing project but it's a, I can show you right here let me push you. <laughs> so um, this is a, an ongoing project it's a it's a tank a robot tank and using LiDAR technology, it's going to be an autonomous vehicle that uh, will be able to, to map out a, a room or a house and uh, actually uh, do some uh, interesting measurements uh, if, if, it ever, if I ever get it to work. But uh, yeah, you might see more about this at a later stage. Another example is um, 
actually, I got stung by a wasp. Well, that was last year. <laughs> I had a wasp nest uh, just just outside my house, and uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, I got stung, and uh, I needed to to pay out some uh, revenge. Uh, but uh, I needed to do it in a fun way, so I actually created um, this robot right here. I think you see it. Yeah. So this is actually a small RC car uh, where I have uh, designed and added. Um, basically a spray can of uh, insect poison but using a, a remote control and then with a small camera as you can see here uh, I use my FPV setup for, for my uh, that I use for my quad so I can actually uh, from inside the house I could drive to the wasp nest and spray uh, the wasps uh, while uh, not not uh, being uh, stung myself uh, I think you can see it uh, here you can see my uh, oh come here so this is the view from the right. Like, yeah, yeah, there are stuff like that. <laughs> so this was a small introduction to uh, Steen's lab. Um, please consider subscribing. Um, maybe uh, you'll find uh, that uh, I create uh, some funny videos uh, for you. And uh, if you're interested in uh, network technology and Yes, but uh, what 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 makes uh, the internet work? <laughs> How is it possible? What could uh, be the reason for for a poor internet experience at your home? What could you do to uh, improve on Wi-Fi performance? Stuff like that. Then uh, do come back from time to time because uh, this is uh, the stuff that uh, I talk about a lot, and uh, hopefully uh, you could learn something. Um, yeah. Well, uh, see you next time. <laughs>